Hey everyone! In this tutorial and review, we'll take a deep dive into Shopify. We'll go through how it works, what you can get with the starter plan, what I like and dislike about this particular e-commerce platform, and I'll make sure to cover everything you need to know to get started with Shopify. And without any further ado, let's get into it. So first things first, let's create a Shopify account so that we can get started. Now, if you want to create a Shopify account as you are going along in this tutorial, please click the link in the description down below. This link will bring you to the Shopify website and this link is not only convenient but can also get you a longer free trial and an exclusive deal on Shopify for the first month. It's honestly the best deal on the internet and there is nothing like it. So from here, we're just going to proceed and answer a couple of prompts. And after answering these prompts, you can now create your Shopify ID. Now, typically the starter plan starts at $5 a month and that is going to be really cheap. But with our particular link, you can even get it for cheaper. Now, if you take a look at the features of the starter plan, it includes things like 10 inventory locations, a 2% transactional fee, a POS light system, localized global selling, and more. So I honestly recommend going with the starter plan, not just because it's the cheapest plan available, but mainly because of its useful features and beginner-friendly features that you're going to find handy in your business. So simply go into your dashboard and click on select a plan and go for the basic plan. Plus, if you want, you can add the POS Pro for free for one month with the basic plan. So click on select basic over here. After that, you're just going to add the basic information about your payment system and then subscribe to their plan. So from here, once you have put in your payment info and chosen your billing cycle, confirm your business address to Shopify. And just like that, your subscription is now completed. So right now on the get-go, we definitely do want to add our product, add our website, add our logo, set up the payments and all of that. And we will go through all of this step by step. But right now, let's go on ahead and add our products. To do this, click on product on the left tab and then click on add product. Over here, you're going to add the title of your product. Then below that, you can enter your description. You can even use the help of AI by clicking on generate text. Once you click on generate text, insert basic information about your particular product and then create a description accordingly. So with that, you will get a generalized description. The more detailed information you provide, the more detailed the AI generated description will be. Now, after that, you're going to add your media by clicking on upload new, and then from here, you can upload the product images. Now, once you have uploaded your product images, you can go on ahead and insert the price of your product. And then below that, you even have an inventory section. This can help you in tracking the quantities of your product. Additionally, you can also add your cost per item for your particular Shopify product. So if you want, you can add, let's say I buy this product at $40. This will calculate the margins and the profit I have for each individual product. However, keep in mind that this is not going to be available to the customer, so only you get to know this and it just helps you in calculating your margins. Now, if you're tracking quantities on your Shopify store, leave this box checked up. So whenever customers are purchasing products, they are aware of the availability of your products. You can also add the quantity that you have. Now, below that, you can also enter shipping information because this is a physical product. Let's say I have the weight as 0.009. And then below that, you can add the variations of your product. In your variations, you can add options such as size, color, material, and style. So for most clothing items, you always have variations in sizes. Click on size and add your option values. Keep in mind that you should add your option values to be the same for all products. So if for one product, I am adding them as S, M, and L to refer to small, medium, and large. For my other products, I'm going to do the same thing. So I will click on done over here. 
Plus, if you're selling clothing or anything that comes in different varieties, you can add multiple variants. So I can add another variation such as maybe color, material, or style alongside the fact of sizing. After you have filled out everything, click on save on the top right. Now it's time to get started with customization of your store. So to do that, we are going to go on ahead and click on settings on the bottom left and then scroll down. Once you scroll down, you will see brand. Click on the brand tab on the left. Once you click on the brand tab, you will see if you scroll down a section called logos. From here, you can add your logo by clicking on the plus icon and choose a particular image that is your logo or add a new logo image. You can always choose other things such as the primary colors of your business. This can help you in making sure that your brand looks cohesive. So to add a primary color, you can go on ahead and select this option and then pick out the color. If you have the hex code of the color, you can also select that as well. Now, if you scroll down, you can also add things such as your cover images and slogans. And below that, a very important section is your social media section. So you can click on add social and choose the particular link you want to add. Then you can go on ahead and add your URL. So let's say it's going to be tiktok.com slash at Lily like this. And you can insert as many social media links from LinkedIn, Vimeo, YouTube, Snapchat, and other social media platforms. Then hit save on the top right to save all of your changes. Now, once you have completed your personal product and your personal branding of your store, it's time to set up Shopify payments. To do that, click on settings on the left. Once you do click on settings, you're going to click on payments. And in payments, you're going to click on choose a provider. So once you're ready to fill out payments, Shopify is going to ask you a few basic questions about your business. They'll ask you about things such as your business type, whether you're in a partnership, a sole proprietorship or anything else. They also will ask you about your EIN number, product category, and more. I suggest filling out all the necessary information if you have it readily available. Any tax information or business verification should definitely be inserted over here. And with that, the next most important thing in the payment section is to actually add your own bank account. You want to have both your routing number and your account number so that Shopify can get funds back into your account. Now, still on the same tab, we're going to go into our shipping and delivery settings. Now, over here, if you've set up a wait for your product, Shopify provides a default calculation of your shipping rates, but they are more like the flat fees and you have the option of getting rid of those, especially if you are setting customized rates and if you want to set up international shipping rates as well. So right now we can leave it as it is, but if you would like to know how to calculate shipping rates or make free shipping rates, let me know in the comments below so that I can make a separate video about that. So for now, let's leave it as it is, but in the long run, you definitely do want to customize this, especially taking into consideration domestic and international shipping. Now let's take a look at what all of this looks like currently, because when you're starting out, you definitely want to customize your website right away. So this is what I'm going to do and this is what I love about a Shopify website. You don't need to be tech savvy or you don't need to turn into a design expert to actually learn how to convert your website into something interesting. So you just need to familiarize yourself a little bit with the current tools of Shopify. And speaking of tools, let's go into our Shopify theme. To do this in your dashboard, click on the online store on the left. Once you click on online store, go into the themes panel down below, then scroll down and click on visit theme store. Now, once you open up the theme store, it will show you multiple different themes available. Plus, if you want to take a look at what your website looks like right now, open up your online store from the eye icon. So this is what our store currently looks like. It looks a little bland. And to customize this and make it a bit more interesting, I can go into the theme library and choose a theme that I like. 
Shopify provides you different filters such as features as well as your catalog size and industry to filter out the best themes for you. They also have a couple of free themes that can help you in choosing what type of aesthetic you want to proceed with for your store branding. Now, once you have chosen a particular theme, click on customize and to customize the theme, the Shopify website builder or editor makes it super simple and easy. Just select the item you want to customize and from the left panel, they will give you a customization section. So I can select an image or upload a new image. To customize the text, simply click on the text and then add a particular text that is going to be reflective of the current season or anything along those lines. You can also customize the banner sizes by clicking on the banner and then scrolling down. You can see the banner height and adapt it to the image as well as choose a default height. Click on save on the top right to save any changes you make to your Shopify store. Now for the final step which is setting up our custom domain. This is going to be the URL of our store. To do this, click on settings on the bottom left and then click on domains. If you already have a domain, click on connect existing domain and follow the instructions that will be provided to you. But if you don't have a domain, click on buy a new domain. And then once you click on buy a new domain, insert the domain name that you want. If it is available, you can purchase it and once done, it'll be automatically available to your Shopify store. So we have currently seen how to customize the basic bits of our store and set up pricing as well as some of the amazing features of the Shopify basic plan such as a POS Lite system that you can integrate with a brick and mortar store as well. Overall, I really recommend the Shopify starter plan for every beginner because it's simple, easy, and it's cheap. So if you figure out that you really don't like it, you can always walk away. But most likely, you will love Shopify as an e-commerce platform. And in the long run, you might upgrade into a more advanced plan with better features as your online business scales up. And there you have it, a complete beginner's guide to Shopify. And by following the steps we've covered, you're now equipped to launch your own e-commerce site. Remember, the key to success is to keep experimenting with different products and designs to see what resonates best with your particular audience. Once again, if you want to sign up on Shopify and claim a huge discount and bonus, head on over to the description box down below. You can get a longer free trial and an exclusive deal on Shopify for the first month. Thanks for watching and I hope this tutorial helped you build your Shopify store. Make sure you go on ahead and leave a like and then I'll see you guys next time. Have a fantastic day ahead.